Well, uh, good morning, everyone. Well, it's morning while we're taping this. Uh, I'm Beth Shibley, a uh, uh, Sunflower, a program person here at Sunflower House Aging Matters in Brevard's Caregiver Resource Center. And uh, this is our caregiver conversation, and we haven't had one of these in a while, and I'm thrilled to uh, have with me today Bill Owens and uh, Rosalie uh, Norman McNamee. McNaney, yes. McNaney, I'm sorry. Um, That's okay. Uh, today with me, uh, from VTOS. And we're going to be talking about grief during the holidays. You know, as we're recording this, we're in the early part of November and Thanksgiving and Christmas and Hanukkah and, and New Year's are all kind of looming over us. Um, so uh, we're going to have just a kind of a conversation about, you know, what that what that looks like, what that means, and some things we can do um, to help us get get through it in a healthy way. So Rosalie, welcome, and uh, Bill, welcome. I'd love it if you could both kind of tell us a little bit about yourselves. Sure, well, my name is Rosalie Norman McNamee. Yeah, there are two names, and I'm a chaplain at uh, VTAS Healthcare, and I've been there for, um, it's, well, it will be 10 years uh, next month, and I've had a chance um, to be able to be, gift to be able to offer workshops uh, throughout the community. And uh, prior, I was um, an ordained minister and also have uh, directed many uh, ministries for helping caring ministries for people from for children all the way up through uh, older generations in different settings. And grief is something that uh, has been uh, clearly a part, it's a part of all of our lives. So I'm thankful to be able to offer support to families and to patients uh, at VITAS uh, regarding grief. Thank you. Hi, my name is Bill Owens. I am a clinical chaplain with VITAS and also an ordained United Methodist pastor and have been with this VITAS program for about four years here in Brevard County. Uh, I too have the honor of sitting beside and with families and patients as they work together to give wonderful loving care to each other and, and to be a blessing. But we do come to those times where grief is an intense and, and very, um, very evident feeling that can be overwhelming. And so that's why it's important uh, to me that we have this discussion today and we get a chance to take a look at how to be uh, proactive as we encounter grief in the holidays. Thank you. So Rosalie, if you'd like yeah. to go ahead and start with us. Oh, well, thank you. Well, but, you know, we're glad to be able to be here today, Beth. And we're also thankful that we can be at the Sunflower House um, twice a month mm -hmm. on the first and third Wednesday of each month from 3 p.m. Uh, to 4.30 offering um, grief support. Uh, and we're grateful that we can take this time, especially as you said, this is the time of the holidays, to pause and to be able to share and emphasize that we wanna support others in coping with grief during the holidays. You know, right now, uh, I was surprised, turned on the radio, and what did I hear? And many of many of us, the Christmas music this weekend. I said, when did that happen? Halloween just ended. I know. And I like it, to, <laughs> yeah. I like to call it Happy Hollow Thanksmas. <laughs> oh, that's a good one. To have. <laughs> and, it, and it's a time where we're all, you know, this whole idea, this expectation that everyone's going to be so happy and joyous and all the songs or singing of all that, you know, what, how we're supposed to be. And yet there are many of us that may be sitting around, and I say yes, because grief is universal and something that we all share, that, you know, that question may come up, well, who's going to carve the turkey this year for Thanksgiving? Grandpa's not here. Or who's going to light the Hanukkah candles? Or, you know, who's going to handle, go and get the tree? Do we even need a tree? All of these things come up. And so it's important that, uh, you know, we take time to say, you know, this, we, if we're experiencing grief, this is a time to pause 
and to be gentle with ourselves. I want to emphasize as we're talking today that each grief journey is unique. So there, there isn't any timeline on, on how long someone experienced grief. And it could be very short, very long, whatever it is. Um, it's all your journey. So we, we try never to compare and to have compassion for ourselves. So as uh, Bill and I are talking today, we want to um, begin with, you know, how do we cope through the holidays with the many emotions and feelings that will surface? You know, those songs, the, the expectations we have. And it's really important. The first thing is that we set realistic expectations for ourselves. Mm -hmm. And the, the main thing to that is planning, you know, have a plan and take time to listen to what are the expectations that you have for yourself before trying to take on everything else that you think you should do so that you know what your limitations are. So Bill, would you like to add to anything to that? Well, we have, we have lots of things that are, are always going on. And as we're trying to hope and uh, cope, and as we're trying to do what needs to be done, we've, we've, looking back, we've always got, we used to do this, we used to do that, um, we, we used to feel so needed, we used to be so busy, and now all of a sudden here in the holidays, we're, we're doing it again, but there is that push that we, we want to keep things the way they've always been or be able to recover the past. And the truth, I like the quote that says, the question is not whether, but how grief will show up and how we'll work with it. It'll be there. And I like what you said. It happens in so many different ways because each person is unique. Each individual has a unique journey. And the relationships that we have had uh, shape us. We talk about identity and some people think they get their identity out of their job or they get their identity uh, out of things that they do. But the truth is much of the identity we feel comes from the relationships that are a part of, of who we are. And that does not go away. We still are in that relationship. We still have uh, unique connections, even though they have changed considerably. And, and drastically. And so as, as we look at it, there are ways and things that we want to uh, always be mindful of and be able to draw from as we encounter the changes that come, uh, especially during holiday seasons. So mainly as, uh, thank you, Bill, because that emphasis that here's the thing, I know Bill gets the same calls I do, is this normal what I'm feeling? And, you know, there isn't any such thing, that word normal. We now know through COVID, we have, we have a new normal, whatever that is, and that keeps changing every day. And that's the other thing. We have this backdrop of COVID while we're also dealing with grief. So that complicates things. And maybe for some people, that even hearing the word COVID is very painful. But it reminds us also of, of the numbers of people who are grieving. We're grief, we're in collective grief now, not just the individual. This is collective as a country, as a world. And within that, there, you know, there isn't anything uh, that has to be a certain way. We know that we have to listen to within ourselves and to our story. And as Bill said, what's the relationship? Loss, we definitely lose a loved one and, a, and, and an individual, but there are so many other losses that ripple effect. So that's why that ripple effect of this, what we're talking about. What do I do now? The holidays are here. What are my expectations? Who's going to do these things? Do I need to put up lights? So first we want to encourage you not to cancel the holidays. Because right, you know, even with social distancing and um, we know with restaurants, there's still things are not very clear that we still want to be sure 
that we're taking time to know what our feelings are and maybe sit down with family and say, this is the plan. This is what I feel I can do or cannot do. And all of this comes under a category of self-care, which Bill and I really support, both of us, the idea of the importance of self-care, listening to our own body. Grief affects us in every aspect of our lives, physically, emotionally, spiritually, cognitively. Yes, cognitively. Can we concentrate? We have papers to do. It affects us socially, as we as we said. And ev everything, who are we now in this new role? Who are we now? It is different, especially if we've been a caregiver for many years. Or whether it, it was a, something that happened very suddenly, a person passed that we didn't anticipate. Whatever it is, it's listening to who we are now. So self-care is what's key. So we're going to go through a few things. Bill, do you want to mention a few? I, I want to take a look as, as we begin to go into uh, the self-care part that uh, we work with so many people. And some of the things we try to help them remember is, first of all, we, we are prone to look at what we have lost and what is no longer there but I want you to take pride in what you did accomplish and in the care and the love that you did provide. Take pride in what you were as a part of, of the gift of, of the touch in the person's life that you love and, and don't overlook that. Also, it, it's okay to be thinking ahead and making a life for yourself. It, it's all right to be looking at things with hope and anticipation. Uh, that's part of taking care of yourself. But there's also practical sides to that. And that has to do with taking care of your, uh, your health with eating and exercising, uh, resting and sleeping, because it does affect. Rosalie talked about the cognitive effect of grief. And some nights, it just keeps you up. And it lingers there. And Getting that sleep that you need and getting that rest you need is a, sort of a challenge. And in seeking help, being willing uh, to reach out, to, to know that you can't do everything. Yes, you can do some things for yourself, but to know that you need uh, to feel that it's okay to, to interact with others and to receive support from them. And that in doing that, you are going to have those feelings of of anger and depression and confusion and conflictedness, that's okay. And so when you are talking with your friends, when you are talking with family, they may not always in the beginning understand, but as you express yourself and are honest with them, they'll come to understand what that means. And you'll come to be able to receive the help that you need from them. Oh, I think those are important, Rosalie, to start with. Yeah, I want to put in here that I think that um, as I'm thinking about people who, when they look at their love, the, the relationship they've had with their loved one that's passed, the person that's the, that has been the primary caregiver, many times that's the spouse or a surviving or surviving child, or, you know, that person that was, that was really on a, you know, a day-to-day -day close basis it's a it's it's a different kind of grief um i think mm -hmm. than than um people who are just a half a step away and i don't mean that it's it's better or it's worse i'm just trying to think about um my relationship with my uh with my mom and my dad when my dad passed away uh, my mom was his primary caregiver even after they even after he moved into um into long-term care she was still his primary caregiver so it was it was um his passing was trans. I, I could think I mentioned this to you too when I was last on it. His tra his passing was transitional for me, but it was transformational for my mom. Mm -hmm. You know, it was I moved right. from from one thing to another. But my day to day life with my husband and on all the different things that we did was not as profound as it was with for my mom, who then all of a sudden, like you said, uh, Bill and Rosalie, you have to redefine who you are. You have to, she had to 
and she's still in the process of doing that. I don't think I'm telling any stories out of school. So I think it's oh, yeah. as primary as, as if we need to take that into account and realize that um, we're going to be imperfect at best. You know, mm-hmm. I think it also helps to remember to have some some grace and some um, and some with, with uh, for ourselves and to be and to be know that um, you know I have a place in my dining room on my table that the perfect person is going to be able to sit at and I've had my <laughs> own dining room table for more than forty years and that little sucker has stayed empty the whole time because nobody has ever sat at the perfect people seat at my okay. dining room table. <laughs> so um, I think that I keep hoping maybe someday one of us will make it. But by the end of the day, um, you know, somebody, I, some of us is already, every one of us has already messed something up. Um, so I just wanted to throw out there that uh, we remember um, through this, through this journey. Um, that, yeah. Go ahead. No, thank you for that. I love your terms, transitional and transformational. Mm-hmm. Uh, it reminds um, uh, me the fact, and we can remind all of us that we all have different responses to a passing of a family member, as you said, depending on our relationship, our role mm-hmm. at, at that time. And, and, all, and they're all valid. Mm-hmm. Whatever they are, they're all valid and what's appropriate for each of us. And um, so within that, grief that we all and and grief is hard work you know it really whoever is doing it uh, mm-hmm. rather it's a daughter or a spouse or you know a son a sister you know all of the relationships um that it, it means it's a loss and a space a part of us mm-hmm. that that is not present with us physically as we would want it to be and it's learning to hold that person differently and it's different for everybody else about how we we go through that and and that's why within the holidays it's okay to have and what you do decide what our we each do what do our expectations of okay i'm not going to do cards this year i don't know i'm just putting that out that may or do i need to do cards or can i just have a few or is it what's really necessary and that really uh, leads us um, into, you know, how do, there's two parts. We want to make sure we talk about how we remember the person. We want to remember, and we have a lot of special memories. I mean, these days, there, you know, um, grief triggers, lots of things are going to come up mm-hmm. about, uh, how, you know, something's cooking. The, the aroma from the turkey, the smell of early in the morning, that seasoning, a cologne, something, a song is going to come on that's going to be someone's favorite. So all of those things, to be aware of them. And I always say, and I, for myself, take pause, a sacred pause, because I really believe it's a sacred time of remembering someone and notice what it is. It's better not to push it away because it it will come back in another way. So notice what it is and to say, you know, I'm feeling sad. It's okay to feel sad. It's all okay to feel, you know, down. The tears are okay. Allow your tears, all of our tears to be captured Mm -hmm. and to notice that. So as we're planning for the holidays, yeah, it's going to be different. There is a change, and I believe you know. It's I'm reaffirming what Bill, Bill said in the beginning. This is going to be different. So, first thing, our expectations are, are to be different. So, in, in making decisions about uh, what you're going to do after you've spoken to your family, you've decided what you can or cannot or choose. We have choice. We have choice of what we can or cannot do. And then, and to convey that, and then, and make a list. And this could be, you know, I I encourage journaling, make a list of what you'd like to do. And maybe there's nothing on that list. Maybe self-care is the main thing, that compassion and to be gentle and to be able to wrap our arms around ourselves with no one else, especially during COVID. If you can't get those hugs, get them somewhere. 
hug yourself during this time. And, and uh, just keep it to the essentials. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be as elaborate. What is the memory? What's the thought that comes to you, comes to each of us in our self-care? And maybe that is that one thing we do but creating a space of grace, that's what I call a space of grace where tears can be there, sadness, as well as that joy. And moving forward doesn't mean forgetting. Moving forward doesn't mean forgetting. So as we continue and ask for help, Ask for help and accept help. You know, how many people say, um, I just had that with my neighbor the other day, tell me anything you need. <laughs> but meanwhile, do we, do we tell, what have I said? Maybe tell them, yeah, I need a pot of soup or I need this fixed, <laughs> you know, or my lights put up. You know, so some of us, uh, and I'm probably guilty of that too. It's important that we say what we need. Mm -hmm. Well, it's, it's, and that's easier said than done. I mean, okay. how many of us have, uh, I, I know my family, I, you know, self, self-sufficiency was a, was a badge of honor in my house. You know, I'm, uh, you know, I want to carry all of my groceries in all by myself in one trip, uh, regardless <laughs> as to whether or not I have a case of water and four things of downy and uh, six packages. I'm going to be doing that all my, all myself, damn it. <laughs> We have the uh, same family. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yes. yes. And so I think that, that that idea of there's somehow it can be very much associated with some sort of weakness to, to, mm -hmm. to even accept it, much less reach out and ask for it, um, mm -hmm. you know, and to say, you know, to take people up on their offers of, of, of you know dropping off something or of picking up something for us or doing something for us yeah it's, yeah. it's much easier said than done yeah and, and the other part of that i just want to add is um that i found caring from people the people who not just say what do you want all of a sudden they show up at the door whether it's a plant a dish or something and you know what if it doesn't work somebody will eat it uh but Maybe that's a reminder to all of us to also to be proactive, to care for someone and not just put it into action. And it doesn't have to be perfect on the other side, rather what we do for the holidays or what we give uh, for the idea of just take the action. You know, mm -hmm. I, I think who's, is that Nike? Just do it. <laughs> just do it. And maybe that's a gentle reminder for all of us to rather than call, call me whenever you need, but meanwhile, just do something for that person or tell them what we need. Well, one of the things that's so important for me and builds a bit on what you're saying where we're talking about mm -hmm. communicating with others, we're feeling grief with such an intensity that it's hard for us to imagine other people aren't aware of it or feeling at least some of it the same way. And uh, you've got people who have all sorts of directions that their lives are taking them, all sorts of things that are consuming uh, their daily activities. And so if we remember to communicate and be honest with, uh, with our feelings and what we need, that helps them to help us. That's not appearing needy that's not appearing as as weak that is very strong in being very clear about what is needed and and how someone can help because most people given the opportunity want to they want to be there for you but truth be told they don't know how exactly. and so that communication part that we're talking about informing others of our needs and and, and building in flexibility, I remember one thing that I read, uh, you talked about don't isolate. And one of the things that uh, I talked with one of my family members about is going to some of the holiday events. And I said, well, just tell them up front that you may not stay for the whole time. Mm 
that yes, you want to come, you want to be present, you want to see everybody, but that please don't misunderstand if I exit early. It isn't because I don't want to be there or don't like you. It's just because right now, that's what I need to do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. And part of it, I like that. And sometimes I, family members, uh, mine might want to barricade me from the door and saying, oh, no. So it's being clear about your, about your, can't, your limits once again and saying, I am going to leave. And giving yourself, give ourselves permission just to be, be yes. with feelings. If if waking up and saying okay, and and part of it is looking at what is the fear, you know. We have, uh, I, you know, I I know in one of our groups uh, online we use a feeling wheel, and you know sometimes the feeling we have about sadness, what's we look at what's closely related to that, the other words. And sometimes there's other things attached to it. So what am I really feeling uncomfortable about? Am I still in some of the stages of grief, of anger? You know, am I still feeling, you know, shock? And just notice those things. And then even looking back further, uh, there may be other things attached to it. And just to acknowledge that goes back again. I, I'll say it over and over. Compassion. If we were talking to a friend and, they were feeling or sharing or some of the things they were having, we take that time for that compassion and that empathy. So to do it for ourselves and, and, and just pause and, 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 you know, whether it's positive affirmation or, or thinking of what our loved one would say, what would our loved one say to us? And it cl clearly is, you know, I want the best for you. I miss you too. And having those moments of gentleness as you give you, give ourselves, because we're all in it, give ourselves permission to be. Even with the music going, even with, and if you don't want to go into a store to shop for gifts, that's okay. If you, if you want to um, maybe use, we have, you know, so much we can order online and everything. And you don't really need to. If you want to make a gift or re-gift, maybe this is an opportunity for photographs or for gifts that uh, from the love that reminds you of your loved one to share with another person, with another generation. So there'll be many ways to do that. We're, we're going to be talking more about, I, I won't jump ahead, uh, but I just wanted to make sure we focus on allowing ourselves to feel that joy of, of if the joy comes up about Christmas or you're with grandchildren or others, we, it's okay to smile. Our breath is part of, in, as we inhale, you know, we can exhale that smile, allow, which is also good for our endorphins and for our bodies. So allow ourselves and allow ourselves to grieve. This is our journey and it's our time and it's okay. It doesn't mean that you've forgotten your loved one if you do experience some time with family or friends or some joy. One of the things that I've uh, heard briefly in the conversation between the two of you, uh, Bill and Rosalie, was, uh, was the word flexibility. And I think that it's also okay for us, you know, I, I know as soon as I make a plan, if I listen out the window, I can hear God giggling because he has his own, we, you know, I just... Mm, the surest way to have my day not land up the way I think it's going to be is to make a plan. So even if we're planning for all of these things, it's also okay to chuck it out the window if something else happens or if for some yes. reason we think we're going to be able to do something. So we've made this plan, these plans and we think we're going to be able to do something. And then when we get in the moment, it's not working out the way we want or maybe it's working out better than the way we want and maybe we didn't plan on stay in the whole time but you know time got away from you and you're doing great there's no reason to feel guilty about that or you know so, so just to also remember that really it's been a long time since anything came down on a stone tablet um and, uh, none of my plans have done that <laughs> i like that i like that very much i know one of the things as you're thinking about events and places that you're going uh it is said over and over that very often we 
we feel uncomfortable about going. Mm -hmm. And that's because anticipating Mm -hmm. going to the event sometimes is more powerful and harder than actually being at the event. And getting over that anticipatory discomfort Mm -hmm. uh, once we get there allows us to feel differently once we're among people. So, and that flexibility is important. Yes. Yeah, that flexibility is, is really important. Thank you for that. Very, very, it's once again not and not comparing or thinking we have to we have to follow everybody else's agenda, but we can listen to ourselves. Yeah, and, and, and the, just that sometimes those quiet times in within are possible. Um, I just want to touch on getting there, the flexibility. And I love, yeah, I, you know, I make plans and God laughs. And, and so listening to ourselves as well as um, letting it be okay. You know, this it doesn't, it doesn't have to be perfect. This whole idea that everything, you know, I think we have a lot of memories, even of all of us have memories of Christmas and, we forget the things when the tree didn't work or the cat pulled it down at the tree, <laughs> the, the things that didn't work. Uh, so, you know what? It's, it's really okay. Perfect is what it is. And so it, we don't have to have, uh, it's okay if we do things differently and that we even think about possibly creating new traditions. Mm-hmm. I know you have been talked about uh, some things around new things, uh, Bill. We've talked with uh, several families and collected from them ideas that have been meaningful for them. Uh, this, none of this means you have to do all of these. Um, and uh, only if they relate should you, should you feel like that you can include them. But a few of them that come to mind from families that have been Uh, sharing with this. One is uh, lighting candles, whether it is uh, Christmas candles, Hanukkah candles, whatever it might be, but lighting candles that uh, represent uh, the warmth of that person's place in your heart and in your life. And then if you are sitting there and it happens to be at a meal or whatever, uh, possibly just sharing a story or a memory that is, is important to you and something that brings you joy, something that brings you comfort, and something that lets you know you have received in that person a gift that is a blessing for you. Also, um, in terms of that, uh, it it was mentioned earlier, and Rosalie talked about how food can represent a person, whether it's going to favorite restaurants or going to places as things open up, and as opportunities, once again, may become available for us in ways that have been limited in these past months, uh, going to favorite places allow you to feel close to that person for that period of time. Um, And uh, she talked about journaling and making a list of ways that that uh, loved one that you cherish enriched your life, Uh, remembering and writing down memories of favorite places that you went, favorite memories that you have of of their life with you and your relationship together. Um, So often when we are, and it's awful, but when we are doing all of those estate planning things uh, very soon after a loved one is gone and we're removing their name from bank accounts and we're removing their name from insurance policies and we're removing their name from property uh, things, we, we do get afraid that we're, we're going to forget them. Mm-hmm. We're, we're removing them from our presence. And, and that doesn't have to be the case. There are things that you can do. One family uh, chose to plant a tree and, and do that. One family that I spoke with uh, found a place that the person loved to go. And uh, they had a place there with bricks that you could put the person's name on or a phrase that reminded you of the person. Uh, All of those things are are important. And then ways of investing yourself, uh, whether it's volunteering or donating or whatever it might be, 
all of those are important ways to remember and to cherish the gift of the person that has been such a part of, of your life. And so you can find all sorts of, of ways and things to do that, sharing stories and talking with people, but those are just a few of the ways that give us an opportunity to celebrate the presence of someone who has, you know, moved on from not being right physically with us every day, but is still with us in our heart every time we think of them. And thank you for that. I'm, you know, intergenerational, I want to talk about some of that because um, as we mentioned, there are different relationships that we've had, you know, I read a daughter, there's, and there may be grandchildren, great grandchildren, young children. And one idea is to create a, a large, uh, decorate a large box uh, uh, and have the children involved in that and wrapping it and bringing, putting memories and even colorful strips of paper. You know, we used to make the, the ring paper by make the chain. Uh -huh. Well, we can take those same strips and have, it, have everybody write something on there of a memory or drawer drawing is journaling a way of journaling as well so and place all those trips and, and memories whatever they want to bring could be photographs and have that box available for a while or at, tell people you're going to be having that if they're coming for the holiday and they when they come they just put it in and then there's a time when you pause and you may have a chair available or a place setting for that loved one as and um as well as I'm just thinking of in the Jewish tradition, there's always a place there for that person who may come and may need to sit. And, and for whatever, regardless of faith, um, to be able to have, then take out each item because let's go back again to what we're saying. It's a way of self-care. We created, you created something new, a new way of remembering the person. It doesn't have to be forever. We, I'm, I'm guilty of, okay, I'm going to do this year after year. I don't know how I'm going to feel next year. So no. but today, that's what I'm going to, we're going to do. And let that be a time of joy and laughter. Still hang up a stocking, set a place at that and put the person's favorite things in there. So we're not at all that, that tug and pull of, as the idea of, because we're doing both in a way. I love when, uh, uh, when the, the term of transitional plus transformational, and in every way we are doing that. And that loved one will, will always be there in some way in a different kind of relationship with each person. So just some other ideas. And we're going to talk, I know, as we have sessions at the Sunflower House, we're going to be even creating um, during December uh, a, a item, you know, um, a decoration or a card which a person can take home and so you could take home in memory of your loved one. So there are many different ways as, um, from food, flowers, and I want to encourage and remind us that there are also negative ways that we want to avoid. So drinking alcohol, substances that take us away from, that are used for the purpose of dulling the pain is something we really discourage. And we want to encourage people to, to think of the positive ways of dealing with the discomfort and the sadness and the pain. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So there are many other, uh, I do want to say the thoughts for the holidays, as we continue that, we hope that these have been helpful. We do have them printed out and we'll have them available at Sunflower House for handouts. As, and as I said, uh, Bill and I will be there on those, the first and third mm -hmm. um, Wednesday. There's also the, we do have sessions uh, that you can call uh, VTOS or you can go to VTOS.com and, and under there look for the grief support groups mm -hmm. and um, sign up for those groups by Zoom, phone, 
and eat and now um, within Vitas, we have just as in Sunflower House, we have places we can go face to face mm -hmm. and to be able to share about um, your, how you're feeling. Just want to say, don't go it alone. Yeah, <laughs> I want to remind folks that um, that we have the, the the groups that we have the Vitas is facilitating um, uh, the Mending Hearts programs from three to four thirty are actually take place after Sunflower House is no longer open to the public, so it affords some confidentiality, and so it's it's uh, that you're taking it takes place in Sunflower House. But there isn't going to be the traffic going around. So for people who are, especially for people who are very, um, you know, kind of knee deep in the grief, wherever that is on the path, um, sometimes a feeling like you're doing it in an open space um, can be a little more uh, difficult. And um, so people who know Sunflower House know that it's really kind of one open space. So uh, please know that um, this, um, these, this support group and this um, time is uh, it, it, it can it's confidential and it's quiet and it's um, you know so I just wanted to let people know that. Uh, are, are there any other things you'd like to? Add? I want to just add uh, we do have a child specialists as well for anybody who has children um, who they uh, uh, teenagers or so who feel that they need some support and. And maybe it it's, may not have even have been recent, but we want to avoid someone having compound grief. And for young children, if parents aren't talking about it or grandparents, they may be hiding this and keeping it in. So let, I just want you to know, we do have those resources as well, mm -hmm. um, VITAS, and, and can leave material at Sunflower House, uh, books about uh, grieving for children. So, um, really, really uh, something we want to encourage. Yeah. One of the things that I think as I'm, as I'm sitting thinking about what we talked about today is the, um, you know, the idea that being, uh, uh, you know, to, to move it back around to, to planning and thinking of things ahead of time. And um, it's sort of, um, it can, uh, I think it, I'm in the, right now I'm in the process of doing this myself personally. My father, the anniversary of my father's death was yesterday. And oh. so my mom, yeah, and oh. um, he passed away uh, two years ago, so 19. Um, and uh, he had been ill for quite a while. Um, so I'm just, it's just, and my mother's birthday is tomorrow. So there's a whole, you know, there's a whole pile of stuff that's in that. You know? yeah. um, so I'm in the process of thinking about how it will be um, to plan it. And it's going to be very different this year um for my husband and I and for me and my mom last year uh, which uh at Christmas time it was just my mom and my husband and I because we were knee deep in COVID and we my husband Mike and I didn't travel to see the grandkids the kids and the grandkids this year we're going to be going back up to New England to see the kids and the grandkids and to see hopefully I hopefully get a chance to see my sisters and um so it's gonna this will be the first time we will have gathered in person um, since, um, since my dad's passing. Uh, so I, I think, and I think that that might not be unusual. I think there are going to be a lot of people this year now being fully vaccinated and, and having things be a little less crazy nuts that, um, that people are going to be able to gather together. And it might be the first time they've been able to gather in person. And so it's going to look very different this year. Um, so. Thank you for saying that. And so um, that's, they are saying that there'll be a lot of people traveling and that time of gathering, clearly I, I, I wanna encourage people to plan a time for remembering as mm -hmm. simple as it is, whether it's a toast or naming or as mm -hmm. like the gift or some of the items, things that Bill mentioned as well, some of the activities. But I really think it's important to mark that time to be together because there wasn't an opportunity before right. um, whether it was zoom services or people not able to travel but this chance for people to cry to talk to laugh together mm -hmm. which usually would have happened prior to covid 
And I, I really think as a nation, we're, we're all begging for this time of, of how to gather together. Mm -hmm. And repeating what, what Bill said, sometimes the anticipation of what it's going to be is, 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 is sometimes that may create a lot of feelings. And, um, but usually just when, as it happens, if we have an idea and we've let people know we're gonna be doing this, it really is not, it's the anticipation is worse than really what's going to happen. Oh, yeah, so. I can anticipate myself out of a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, right. I can just, you know, by the time I've worked it out, um, I can, you know, because right on the anticipation are all of those things, like, you know, the coulda, shoulda, woulda might, might be happening sometime. Um, and um, so I can work myself right out of lots and lots of things. Mm -hmm. um, by just anticipating and doing the what if thing. And, um, you know, I think, again, I, I've always regretted the things I have not done more than the things that I've done. Mm -hmm. um, and so I, I learned to try to put that in, anticipating all of the things that could go wrong to put that into perspective, you know, um, not that we shouldn't acknowledge it. I think we should, but I think we need to realize that, you know, it's not all going to be doomsday, you know. Yeah. And the idea of holidays, you know, the tips we're giving about planning, anticipation, you know, accepting limitations, asking for help, uh, all of those are, you know, yes, it's about the holidays coming, mm -hmm. but you just mentioned your father's anniversary, your mother's birthday. Those are, those are occasions that will continue being there and that we also want to have ways of support and care and surrounding ourselves with people who understand um, and, and love us and can be there to listen and lean on and capture our tears in the same way. So uh, those will, so these ideas can, these thoughts for the holidays are thoughts for all the occasions that may show up. Well, yeah, I think my, you know, my mom and, you know, my, you know, my mom was born in November. My, my dad passed away in November. There's the holidays. My dad was born in, in May. And then we have Father's Day and then their anniversary was in August. And so there's almost always, always you know, something that, that, you know, I mean, it's my dad, you know, um, same thing with my mother-in-law, you know, she passed away in April. I mean, there's, um, she, there's all kinds of different things that, that pop up with people we love that um, aren't necessarily just between Halloween and the middle of January, you know? <laughs> right, right. And so I think a lot of this stuff is, is very much appropriate for any time that we are. Any time. Um, yeah. And, and, and sometimes the expectations, I, I do agree with you, it's any time. And the expectations from outside, you know, are from you know, the world as far as happy joy and every song, you know, uh, we may not all feel that way. So how are we tuning in and doing something in honor of the loved one um, and um, maybe helping out at, at the food pantry or serving food or in something or giving a gift um, in, in the person's name. So we're continuously they're, they're, I love one, as we say their name, there's an African proverb, every time you say their name, that they're alive and present within us. So their love continues, keeps on coming. And how do we continue to do that, to be present with them? And so thank you for, for sharing that. Yeah, thank you. I, I have I've also heard that, you know, I mean, the person is truly still with us as long as the people that remember them. Oh, um, I like that. You know, and so right, right, I've, right. I've heard that, and that, that sort of plays off of that. You're right when you say a person's name. A person's name. Thank, Thank you. you. Anything else you'd like to add, Bill? I, I thought I'd just end with one of our poems that's in our package. Okay. Well, I, I, I do before you do that. One is uh, Beth has helped us understand and has said so well this is not just for these particular holidays. There are so many times in any given year that uh, the person's presence comes into our heart and we are reminded of, of the gift of their life with us. And just to recap a little bit, 
uh, remember to plan ahead. It helps you not get caught off guard if you plan ahead just a little bit and prepare for what's to come. Uh, you don't have to do all the stuff, but don't isolate. Um, take time for yourself and have time for solitude, remembering, and, and giving thanks. And as it replies to relationships, surround yourself with people who love and support you. And don't be afraid to tell them what's in your heart and what's going on and what you need. Uh, they're there as, as a gift and they want to be that gift for you. So allow yourself to be very, very real, to feel that joy and sadness and sometimes the anger that you feel. There is no right or wrong way to do this. There is, is no way that uh, follows a certain pattern. And if you follow that, you won't ever have to deal with this again. The highest thing that uh, the big, most important thing can be said is take care of yourself. Yeah. Um, you know, just give attention to that. Be patient with yourself. Be realistic with what's going on. Listen, you are the expert about what is happening in you. So take care of yourself. And don't deny the tears. They're there. I, don't try to be something you're not. I heard, a, I saw a really cool uh, meme the other day. Uh, I just have to interrupt about, about tears. And it was um, Snoopy and uh, Charlie Brown. And they were talking to one another. And one of them said to the other, sometimes memories well up in my eyes and roll down my cheeks. <laughs> oh, I love it. How true, how true. I love that. That's beautiful. Thank you. It, it, does. it really does. Uh, in, in the package, I'm not going to read all of it, but I'm just going to give there's a wonderful poem on thanks by Dossier Sims. And um, it's it's related to being thankful uh, during it's for Thanksgiving that um, there is a missing chair at the table, but the circle of family gathers close. And for that, I am thankful. The turkey is smaller, but they're still stuffing. For that, I'm thankful. The days are shorter, but the nights are softer. For that, I'm thankful. The pain is still there, but it lasts only moments. For that, I'm thankful. The calendar still turns. The holidays still appear, and they still cost too much. But I am still thankful. The room is still empty. The soul still aches. But the heart remembers. For that, I am thankful. The stillness remains and the sadness is smaller. For that, I am thankful. The moment is gone, but the love is forever. For that, I am blessed. For that, I am grateful. Love was once and it still is a part of my being, for that I am living. I am living and for that I am thankful. So may we all, with the holidays, be filled with the reasons to be thankful and to acknowledge how we're feeling and to know that we have people around us and programs and to support we don't have to be alone and that the, our loved ones are always present with us. And may we have that wondrous gift of being thankful and give that gift to ourselves, that reminder. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you, Rosalie. Thank you. That was beautiful. So these I, handouts, we'll have them there for you as well. So people can pick up that poem. That'd be and great. I would love to have them at our, at our front, kind of in our front, in our front area where we have our newsletters. Yeah. If you could bring some extras and people can just come in and and um and grab them and we can point them out um you know uh, and i really looking forward to the the next time that rosalie and bill will be in sunflower house which is this uh a week from now not today but next week wednesday uh, from yes. uh 3 to 4 30. uh you can give sunflower house a call if uh at uh 321-452-4341 to register a ahead of time um, you don't have to if you want to just come in the door that's okay Rosalie and Bill are there and um but we do appreciate it to kind of know ahead of time so we if they've got handouts and things they can have those uh, enough of those available um and uh, a teeny, uh, small group right now so it's not an overwhelming huge group we have uh, just a couple of people that come in 
Um, and I'm looking forward to seeing you both next week. And I really appreciate the chance to talk with you about this and that deep dive into um, into the the, uh, the the rumble bump that can be grief during the ho the holidays. Thank you, Beth. Thank you so much, Beth. And thank oh, you, Beth. I appreciate thank it. you. We're able to be here. Okay. All right. And, thank um, you. Okay. Have a pleasure. So we meet again. All right. Thanks again, folks. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank bye -bye. you. Bye -bye. Blessings. Bye bye.